I am thrilled to be sitting here with you, Valeria from Fermata. Um, I think your ag tech and crop management company is so innovative. Um, and so I guess I want to start by asking you to talk about the founding story of your company. Um, you used to be involved in a startup that dealt with diagnosing severe cancer patients. How did you get into ag tech? Yeah, it's, it's a funny story. So I was, my background is bi in biotech and I was studying applied maths and then working in different biotech startups, leading AI teams. So actually AI is field of my professional expertise and I think I pretty much understand how biotech and math tech works. And uh, I was never thinking of switching the industry and I think that I'm the farthest person from agriculture like in the world because I never saw how the plants grow. I never had any plants at home. So I had absolutely no idea what problems can be there with the plants. Uh, so just friends of friends of mine uh, who are growing tomatoes mm. professionally, like they have a greenhouse. They were interested in what are the capabilities of the AI and how they can apply it to agriculture. And they asked me just to talk to them. And we had this conversation and I actually realized that plants have very similar problems to those that we have with humans. So it's also very important to diagnose things properly and make sure that this is exactly that disease that you think and also to make it very fast because mm -hmm. if you identify the disease of the plants too late, you can lose your whole harvest because of this disease. So it was very similar. We already had some technologies in hand and we decided together with my friends to launch the company and try to find the right application of artificial intelligence to agriculture. It took us a while actually to find the product market fit. I think that about a year we were struggling. We were first thinking that we'll be doing a robotics company. We even built a prototype. So we did the standard story of startups when you start coding and developing your product before you talk to any customers and understand the market. But this learned us, um, we, we learned a lot of things uh, at, that, at that point and eventually we found the product that we're developing oh, cool. now. cool, I had no idea. <laughs> and who are your, are your clients mainly farmers or is there anyone else who, who is using your product? So these are at this point mainly farmers. So okay. we work with uh, various industries, outdoors, indoors, and different types of crops like tomatoes, leafy greens. We're now uh, opening uh, operations in flowers uh, because mm -hmm. it's also interesting and big market. Yeah. And uh, our main clients, yes, these are the growers who actually produce uh, the crop. So we work with agronomists or other internal experts who are responsible for the health of the plants. And also we are working to uh, connect uh, growers to external experts who are called crop consultants who help them to make right decisions uh, with their plants. It's very similar to okay. like you know how telemedicine works. Yeah. So this is uh, where the inspiration for Fermata came from. Huh. Can you explain exactly how AI applies in this and how exactly your, your technology works? Okay, so how the farmer typically controls the health of his plants. He has a team of workers who are called scouts, and these scouts, they walk in greenhouse, in the field, look at every plant from morning to evening. And of course, the human factor and the limitations of human vision leads to that people sometimes miss that there is a problem. And then this problem grows and farmer lost, loses his harvest. And uh, what we do is we install cameras uh, in the greenhouse or in the field. So we use uh, off-the-shelf cameras, which people typically use for security purposes. And these cameras capture images of every single plant, of every single leaf. Mm -hmm. And these are thousands of images. You cannot process them yourself. So we have to use artificial intelligence here. Uh, computer vision which processes these images, identify whether there are pests or diseases uh, on the plants and then if we identify something we notify the farmer uh, through the app that he has to react immediately and deal with this problem. That is so cool. This is the technology of the future, <laughs> especially when it comes to farming. Um, and I guess going along with that, um, in what ways do you believe technology has the power to affect the world's future food supply? So we have uh, two goals, which are sus sustainability goals, basically. Uh, one is that we want to reduce losses of harvest for the farmer, because this is one of the main sources of food waste uh, on Earth. And if the farmer is capable of um, reacting fast to the problems with his plants, then he loses less harvest, obviously. So on average, farmers lose up to 30% harvest per cycle, which is uh, a lot, of course, and it can be even much more. So this is uh, the goal number one. The goal number two is we want to help a uh, farmer uh, use much less chemicals because now they have to 
uh, apply them from, to, from time to time because they cannot be sure whether they have some disease or not. Uh, with us, they might be able to apply chemicals only when they 100% are sure that they need it in this specific area and not applying it to all the greenhouse or farm. And this, of course, leads to healthier uh, food eventually. Interesting. Now, when you think of farmers, you don't necessarily think of, you know, the most tech adept people. Right. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you to convince farmers to use your technology? You, you're absolutely right. This is a huge challenge. And the most of farmers don't, you know, they don't understand that they can do things in completely different way and much better because they say, oh, I already have a team of scouts and they're doing well. I've invested a lot into training these people mm -hmm. and this this is the best you can do. Why are you talking to me about some different technology? I'm already doing like the best possible thing. And it's very challenging to explain a person that it can be even better. And that's why we were thinking about some like, you know, marketing features that would help us to, you know, overcome this challenge, you know. And now we are, for example, providing farmers for free one camera and you can use it for one cycle, one growing cycle, and just try it and see how it works. Because this is the only way, you know, you can speak as much as possible about like money, savings that you have already achieved within the previous projects. And they say, okay, but that was a bad farmer and I am a good farmer. And even if you're talking that, you know, that currently you have the scouts and they get tired and we are 24 seven monitoring what's going on, still they are not convinced. So the only way actually to prove yourself is just to show your product and give it into their hands. Interesting. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about a hot button issue that I think is super relevant to what you do, which is climate change. Um, what do you think are the biggest challenges um, in terms of how climate change impacts your business and how are you working to overcome them? So I think it's not a challenge for our business, it's more a challenge for our clients. Mm. And for them, of course, uh, climate change is something that makes things unpredictable, you know? Right. You might not have rain or you might have too much water or the year is change in electricity prices. You have, when you're a grower, you have a lot of different factors that affect your business and you have to, to play with them to be as productive and efficient as possible. So this is where we help them. So data is very, very important in this case. You you need to capture as much data as possible and build some models because you cannot do this with just your brain, your simple human, you know, that's why you need artificial intelligence to make as much sense of data as you can. Absolutely. Um, and what trends either in food tech or just technology in general, um, what trends in tech are exciting you the most right now? For me, and as we're sitting here in Israel, if I'm right, more than 30% of world companies that do artificial meats mm. are from Israel. And I think that this is a great tech. So this is what I'm monitoring myself because yeah. I think that this is definitely the future. There are a lot of technological issues there from biotech perspective. This is why also this is somehow related to me. And uh, I think this is very, very interesting. And I see this as a next big change in the way we consume food. So I guess going along with that, what um, new products or horizons or ideas are on the horizon for Fermata? Are you looking at stuff to do with alternative meats or, or anything else you're thinking of? And so for us uh, as a startup, the key task is actually to have a sharp focus. And it's very, very sophisticated task for a founder, for me, because I like always uh, finding new stuff, launching new projects, and I have to control myself, you know, uh, to help Fermata survive. And I uh, stepped from the CEO position two months ago, and now I'm chief innovation officer, and we have amazing, amazing new CEO in the company. And my goal is actually to be like this innovation strategy for our team. And uh, at this point, we're mostly focused on on uh, you know targeting different markets so as I said for example flowers is uh, the market which we see huge value in because uh, there you also have to control appearance of the plants very well uh, it's it fits very good with our technology and uh, there is a lot of money in this market and a lot of need uh, so I believe that this is the main next step for Fermata. Excellent um, and I want to end with what advice would you have for young entrepreneurs or founders who want to get into something or a field or a startup um, that they have absolutely no experience in like you did and want to break into a new industry, what's your top piece of advice? 
Uh, my top piece of advice is probably to try to find this balance between you know negative reaction of people on your product and reality because you know when you're in love with the idea you have especially when you don't understand market very well and people are telling you that this is a bad idea maybe it is most likely it is you know so as a startup you have only one advantage compared to large corporations large corporations have a lot of people a lot of resources money and other like they have good reputation you don't the only thing that you do have is flexibility and I think that this is the key thing that you have to use so if you understand that something is going in the wrong direction and you get a lot of negative feedback you have to stop and think what are you doing wrong and where is actually the perfect product market fit that is perfect advice Thank you so much. And thank you for, for sharing your story and your company with us, Valeria. And I wish you and Fermata truly the best of luck as you continue on this thank journey. You so so much. Thank, thank you. you.